Section 8 powers gr uh, granted to Congress and coin under 5 to coin money, regulate the value thereof of, and of foreign coin and to fix th and the standard of weights and measures. This is the United States. This is the Constitution of the United States. Okay. And then you have under Section 10, powers prohibited to the states. Powers prohibited, that's the states can't do this under the United States Constitution. No state shall enter into any treaty alliance or confederation grant letters of mark and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts, pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts, or grant any title of nobility. Hey, can we give the lawyers the Esquire title? I don't think so. But the biggie there is they can't make anything but gold and silver uh, pay payment in, in a debt, right? So what happens there? The state is not operating under the Constitution anymore. It's not a lawful state. So they have a bonding requirement under, and they've elected to have an insurance policy which doesn't meet the requirements of the Constitution and the codes. So, so does the state of California pay any of its debts with gold and silver coin? No, then it's acting unlawfully under the requirements of the United States Constitution. These parts of the United States Constitution have never been repealed. In 1933, this country went bankrupt to the Federal Reserve, a private foreign corporation who has never listed its true owners or filed a financial statement or been audited by Congress and continues to print money from thin air and loan it at interest. Would it be treason? Would that be treason? You bet. So all agents of the government would be committing perjury to swear that they would not engage in any activity that constituted overthrow of the Jewish Republic of California. This topic could stretch out to a book the size of a Bible. Now let's see if uh, the courts are truly members of the judiciary of the state or just private companies running for profit. See the attached PDF file showing the Superior Court of Sonoma listed as a business by Manta. And here we have it up on the screen. Let's uh, zoom it in a little bit. And we see Sonoma County Superior Court, the Judicial Council of California. Oh, you think, you think it was the state of California, but nope, it's the Judicial Council. They're apparently the superior companies. Is this your company? Yeah, I think it is. Now we go down to here at the bottom where it says, Sonoma County Superior Court is a private company. Wait, it's not the judicial branch of the state of California? It's not a direct um, part of the judicial branch of the state of California. It's a private company. That's interesting. And here we have a picture of the roster of public agencies, which is required to have a roster of public agencies in every um, clerk of the court's uh, county clerk's office, which is where I got this one. And it says roster of public agencies in alphabetical order, and you can see they're all listed here and the dates that they were made. And here we go to the S Sonoma County Superior Court is a public agency, right, in 1224-2002. Uh, now the significance of that is, is that Under Government Code 53050, the term public agency is used in this article, as used in this article, means a district, public authority, public agency, and any other political subdivision or public corporation in the state. It's public because they applied to the state for a license. Anytime the state grants a privilege of being a corporation, 
then it's public. If it was private, it would be a privately held or organization. I mean, you can have a family that has a franchise of pizza parlors, let's say, and they own them all. Public corporation in the state, but does not include the state or a county, city and county or city. So in other words, Government Code 53050 says the term a public agency, as used in this title, does not include the state or a county. Well, if they don't include the state, wouldn't the judiciary be part of the state? I mean, you have three branches of government, the judiciary, the legislative, and the executive. If you're telling me that the court isn't part of the judiciary and that's not a branch of the state, you got some splaining to do. So if the court is a public agency, it's not the state, what is it then? Do you think the legislature is a public agency? Is the executive branch's governor, is that a private, a public agency? Government Code 53051 says, quote, A, within 70 days after the date of commencement of its legal existence, the governing body of each public agency shall file with the Secretary of State on a form prescribed by the Secretary of State and also with the county clerk of each county of which the public agency maintains an office. I guess the court maintains an office in the county. A statement of the following facts. C. And it shall be the duty of the Secretary of State and of the county clerk of each county to establish and maintain an indexed, quote, roster of public agencies as to be so designated, which shall contain all information filed as required in subdivisions A and B, which roster is hereby declared to be a public record. In other words, anybody can see it. If they tell you they can't, you can't see it, just quote this government code to them. The clerk of the court gave a signed letter stating the FEIN number, that's Federal Employee Identification Number, for the Sonoma County Court. They all have them, and what does that prove? The state does not have any constitutionally requirement, requirement to pay taxes to the federal government. I mean, why would the state have to pay taxes to the federal government? They are independent sovereign authorities, aren't they? I mean, what about uh, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the United States Constitution? The IRS states that only businesses have to have an FEIN number. So why would the Judiciary Office of the State of California, would they be considered a business? Let's look. Okay, here we have a letter from the Superior Court of California, County of Sonoma. It's pretty official. There's the Jose Gillian is the chief executive officer. He's also the head clerk of the court. CEO, I don't know. If you have a CEO, is that a business? And then we have memorandum to from the court executive assistance, notice of a demand for oaths and bonds, dated. This is to acknowledge that on June 18th, 2010, the Sonoma County Court received your demand for oath and bonds as a request for the Sonoma County Court's federal ID number was made verbally. See? Right there. In response to your request, copies of the oaths and of office of the judges were provided. Of course, they weren't the ones that were uh, certified and they didn't show file stamps. The Secretary of State uh, Deborah Bowen has those. The court's federal ID is as follows, 68045 See? The court does not have documents entitled bonds. Now, we know that each member is, in, is required to have a bond available to the public for viewing. So, I guess they didn't have to have one in this case. Required to have an FEIN number, and now let's see um, who's required to have an FEIN number by the IRS. Let's take a look. Here's the IRS statement. Do you need an EIN, employee identification number? And it says, 
you will need an EIN if your answer is yes to any of the following questions. For your convenience, just click on the yes option and you'll go directly to how to apply. Do you have employees?